Hello everyone, a warm welcome to Strategic Management, which is a journey of business to perfection and efficiency. In this subject, we are going to cover seven chapters in totality. Chapter one, business environment. Chapter two, business policy and strategic management. Chapter three, strategic analysis. Chapter four, strategic planning. Chapter five, formulation of functional strategy. Chapter six, strategy implementation and control. Chapter 7, Reaching Strategic Edge. So to begin with, Chapter 1 covers these topics. This is the basic outline of Chapter 1. And the chapter begins with a basic understanding of what business is. That is, business has been a part of commerce syllabus right from the junior college days. So in the words of uh, Professor Lewis Henry Annie, I'm just referring to his definition so that we can understand business a little better and then proceed with the further topics. So in the words of Professor Lewis Henry Haney, business is a human activity. We all know that. Directed towards producing or acquiring wealth, this is the reason for doing business, which in simple words can be referred to as profit. And how do we do it? Through buying and selling activities. We're referring to trade in general. We all know that business involves two main activities, industry and commerce. And commerce involves trade. So this is the simple understanding of the term business in the words of Professor Lewis Henry Haney. And the thing that is implied in the definition which doesn't seem to be clearly mentioned is the fact that in today's world, only those goods will be manufactured and only those services will be provided which are required by the people, which are as per the tastes, preferences of the people. The earlier business world, which had very less competition, and today's competitive business world is all about make whatever you can sell. Because in today's world, due to the high level of competition, businesses find a tough time. And hence, they will only provide those goods and services which are required by the people, which are as per the tastes, preferences, or likes, dislikes of the people. So this is the basic understanding of the term business. And the word business has three interpretations. You can say that I am into business. That is basically your occupation or your work, which is mentioned in the center. We also refer to business as an organization or an entity, which is the first point. We, we say that uh, we refer to an organization that as a business, that it is a big business. It is uh, one of those businesses which has made it big. So we refer to business as an entity. We can also refer to business as an occupation or as a work. And we can also refer to business as a process, as an activity. And a business has certain objectives. And these objectives are given by Professor Lewis Henry Haney. The first objective of a business is survival. And rightly said, in today's competitive business world, businesses find it difficult to survive. We all know about businesses like Nokia, Blackberry, Kodak. And these businesses were either on the verge of dying or they're already dead. And there could be n number of reasons to that. But the point to be noted as is the fact that survival becomes the first and the primary objective of a business. So survival is basically the will and the anxiety of a business to stay for a long, long, long term in the future. And survival for a business is very important because if a business survives, only then it can go ahead. It is important for us to note that survival becomes the first objective of any business wanting to make itself big in today's world. The second objective of business after it has survived is stability. Now, stability, in simple words, is doing nothing new and trying to establish itself more firmly in the world. So in simple words, after a business has fought itself out of the competition a little and uh, made sure that it has come out of the earth a little, the way a seed sprouts on the surface, that is basically survival. And after that, what happens is the roots get strong. So 
making the roots strong is basically stability. So in stability, the objective of a business, in simple words, is to do nothing new, to continue selling the same products or providing the same services in the same markets. So it will continue doing so till the time it sees a great business opportunity. And stability may also be followed by a business when the environment is not conducive to growth, when the environment is uncertain or hostile. So the first objective, as we just discussed, is survival. And the second objective becomes stability. Now, only after a business has survived and become stable, that is, it has established itself a little in the market, only then it can grow. And growth involves several aspects. Growth may refer to growth in terms of its investment, in terms of the products it is selling, in terms of the revenue generated, in terms of the number of units it has, in terms of the number of manufacturing facilities it has, and so on and so forth. So to take a practical example, <clears throat> Micromax as a company. Micromax started selling phones in the year 2010. So it's been just four years, we're in 2014 as of now. And uh, it, has a, it has been able to survive. It has been able to stabilize itself in the market. And it has also been able to grow because it comes in the top five phone making businesses in the country. And it comes in the top 15 in the world and thus it has been able to make a way for itself and cut through the competition in today's highly competitive uh, business world in spite of uh, companies like Samsung, Sony, HTC having a strong presence in the market. So after a business has managed to survive, after it has been able to establish itself a little, that is stability, it will grow, it will definitely grow. And that is exactly what Micromax has done. Micromax has also started selling 14 of its handsets in Russia. And this will simply be an example of growth. And after a business has grown, it will go towards a high level of perfection because big businesses involve a high level of management. And big businesses certainly have to make sure that they are efficient enough to cut down unnecessary costs. And efficiency simply is a ratio between output and input. So with the minimum possible inputs, a business should be able to generate maximum possible outputs. And that is what a business has to aim for after it has been able to grow in the market. So one nice example that we can take here in the point efficiency is that of Dabawalas. The Dabawalas in Mumbai have a Six Sigma rating. Now Six Sigma is basically a rating that is given to businesses which are highly efficient. Just to mention a little in detail, Six Sigma rating is given to businesses having a perfection rate of only 3.33 mistakes per 1 million. That is, for example, if I'm into manufacturing of this product, so per 1 million, that is per 10 lakhs of product manufactured, only 4, that is 3.33, should be faulty or defective. So only if my perfection rate is 3.33, what that means is only if my perfection is so high, that is, if I make only 3.33 mistakes per 1 million in terms of either the products delivered or the services provided, only then my business gets the Six Sigma rating. And Dabawalas have this Six Sigma rating. Now, it is to be noted that the Dabawalas are semi-literate. They are what, probably 12th past or 10th past, and they uh, do not make use of any technology as such. The only modes of transport used is bicycle, the local trains of Mumbai, and the feet. And their perfection is highly admirable. They have been featured in the Forbes magazine. Dabawalas uh, have been a case study uh, by students of Harvard. And they have a lot of other uh, achievements. So efficiency basically 
is the ratio of output of one input in simple words and once a business has been able to survive has been able to stabilize itself in the market it will grow and after it has grown it will definitely need to bring in efficiency in business operations without efficiency things may go a little as per not desired so to avoid that we need to be efficient enough so that we can go towards profitability and high level of profitability so in simple words effic efficiency refers to the fact that a business has to make the best possible use of its resources of course in the best possible manner to make sure that things don't go haywire because of large scale operations this in in simple words becomes mandatory now once a business has stabilized itself in the market it has been able to survive it grows and after growth it has to bring in a certain degree of efficiency without which uh, the business may be hampered a little now in terms of growth we can take another example of maruti suzuki now, in the third quarter of the last year which is 2013 14 the last financial year in the third quarter maruti suzuki made a net profit of rupees 681 crores and this was 30% more than the year on year profit which means uh it was 30% more than the quarter 3 profits of the previous year that is 2012 13 uh, this can be an example of growth certainly and infosys in quarter 1 of this year that is uh, 2014 recorded a net profit of rupees 2886 crores which is an example of profitability and profit obviously is the main objective of a business needless to mention that the earlier four objectives become essential without which profitability cannot be achieved as such and there are several other objectives of business which refer to the csr part of it that is the corporate social responsibility and a business obviously should not focus only on profits it has to give back to the stakeholders and the stakeholder simply means that uh we're talking about the shareholders we're talking about the investors we're talking about the consumers uh, the suppliers the government agencies the society in general the environment so these become objectives for a business now we need to understand the fact that a business cannot actually uh, be surviving in an isolated vacuum which means that a business cannot go away from its surroundings and the surroundings of a business definitely have an influence on it as we can see the internal factors of a business like its own employees like the capital the value system of the organization will definitely have an impact on it and also certain factors outside the business which we name as internal environment and external environment so the internal environment consists of those factors which are within the business having an influence on the business and the external factors consists of those factors which are outside the business a business can have control over its internal factors to some extent say for example it can give training to its employees it can build a sound infrastructure uh, in case it uh, has a deficit of capital it can raise more capital but the external factors are beyond the control of a business they are uncontrollable factors which are further classified into micro factors which are the specific forces and macro factors which are the general forces now the micro environment of a business will consist of its own organization that is the 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 other institutions in simple words the suppliers the customers the competitors the market in general and the intermediaries the links the traders is what we are talking about so all these factors are found outside the business and they definitely tend to have an impact on the business and these are referred to as specific forces because these factors will have an influence on only one particular business for example customers of a particular business stop buying its products it will have an influence on that business only if the suppliers increase the price of raw materials 
it will have an impact on that business only. And the macro factors are those factors which have an influence on all the businesses and hence referred to as general forces. The factors in the macro environment of business will be factors like political environment, economic environment, socio-cultural environment, technological environment, global environment and demographic environment. And these are the factors about which we are going to discuss in the slides to come in this chapter. Now, continuing with political or legal environment. Now, in simple words, this consists of the ideologies followed by the main or the leading political party in that particular country or that particular state in which business is functioning. It will also include certain legal factors, say for example, the laws, rules, regulations, which a business has to follow. So these factors have an influence on the business. We are discussing factors of the business environment and we are splitting them into various uh, categories. So this is the political or the legal environment in which these factors tend to have an influence on the business and a business has to adapt accordingly. The way a human being has to adapt to its or his or her surroundings in the same way a business has to adapt to its surroundings without which only the business will be affected. The surroundings are certainly not going to change as per the business. So business has to adapt. And if we talk about business, the strongest is the one which is the most adaptable. Survival of the fittest uh, is something that we all know, Darwin's theory. So in business, the fittest is not the one business that has uh, the largest capital or is the strongest in the market. But the fittest is the business which is the most adaptable to change. So going ahead, the next point is economic environment and this factor of business environment consists of three things. First is the economic system. Now in India there is a mixed system meaning that businesses are not only owned by the government and not only owned by private entities. It's a combination of both. It is not just a capitalist system nor a socialist system a mixed system. This also tends to have an influence on the business. The second point here is economic conditions. In simple words, the state of the economy of a particular country where the business is functioning. So India is certainly a growing market and hence we see an inflow of most of uh, the global businesses wanting to come and uh, try their luck in India. So we see businesses, we see brands like Mercedes, BMWs, uh, then uh, we see Audis and all other brands coming to India, not just in terms of automobiles, but uh, in all other terms. The next point is economic policies. This factor consists of the various policies formed by the government which a business has to follow. Say for example, the tax policies, uh, the agricultural policies, export import policies and so on and so forth. Now the next factor having an influence on the business is the technological environment. Now the prevailing technology in the world and the changing technology certainly tends to have an impact on the business. And that is one of the main reasons, the changing technology is one of the main reasons why Kodak as a business could not survive because it depended too much on one particular product. And as the world kept changing, as digitization made its way in the market, Kodak certainly lost its market share because nobody uh, these days prefers uh, using a camera with a roll. With the advent of technology, everything is uh, made in the digital world. So you can click photos, uh, you can sync that uh, with your computer or your cell phone and you can process it. You can get a print out of it through, through the latest printers available. And that is one of the main reasons why Kodak could not survive in the market. It is also to be noted that uh, these days no businesses are into making audio cassettes because that is the past. So technological environment certainly has an impact on businesses. A T-series is one of those businesses which had a good market share uh, in the business of audio cassettes at one particular point in time in the country. It has adapted with time. T-series uh, has shifted into film making as well. That seems to be its main business these days. We see a lot of uh, films made by T-series. 
सो अ बिजनेस हैज टू चेंज विद द चेंजिंग टेक्नोलॉजी और एल्स इट माइट हैव अ डिसएडवांटेज इन द बिजनेस वर्ल्ड बिकॉज टेक्नोलॉजी एंड बिजनेस आर हाईली इंटर रिलेटेड अ बिजनेस के नॉट सर्वाइव विदाउट टेक्नोलॉजी एंड दैट इज सिंपली द रीजन वाई स्ट्रेटेजिक मैनेजमेंट दिस सब्जेक्ट एंड आई टी योर सब्जेक्ट कम टूगेदर इन योर एग्जाम आई पी सी सी ग्रुप टू एग्जाम बिकॉज यू के नॉट सेपरेट टेक्नोलॉजी फ्रॉम बिजनेस इन टूडेज वर्ल्ड बिकॉज टेक्नोलॉजी डज 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 इन्फ्लुएंस the operations of a business as the second point states now technological environment in simple words refers to the prevalent technique of the technology the future technological needs and the research and development needed and a lot of times there are opportunities arising out of technological inventions say for example uh, the product google glass it is like another smartphone on your head you can find out about it from the internet and you will understand that this is where the technology is going in terms of gadgets this is going to be the next probably the next best thing in gadgets till the time we can upload things matrix style in our brain from a computer or other gadget google glass seems to be the next best thing and risk and uncertainty of technological development also tends to have an impact not knowing the fact that where exactly is the technology related to my field of business going that also tends to have an influence on the business now the next factor to be considered which influences the business which is a part of the environment of business is the demographic environment now the demographic environment consists of factors like the population size the geographic distribution and the income distribution this means that the reason one of the main reasons why india is a preferred market for all uh the big sellers outside india is the fact that the population in india is big and when i say the population in india i am talking about the growing middle class population which forms a third of the population of the country and this is the population that has the willingness to buy that even has the spending capacity so this population size is one of the main factors that attracts businesses the more the number of people the more the business is attracted the second point is the geographic distribution now how these people are placed in terms of geography is also one factor that will tend to have an influence on a business now in india if we consider the urban market and the rural market the urban consumer is certainly india is in simple words is a cost conscious market so the urban consumer will definitely be cost conscious but the rural consumer is highly cost conscious and this certainly tends to have an influence on the business so the geographic distribution the placement uh, tends to have an influence on the business in terms of the costing that a business has to make in terms of the delivery of the products in terms of making the goods available and so on and so forth and also the income distribution now a big population uh has no value for the business if it doesn't have a good spending capacity so income distribution is also one point to be considered and these three points come in the demographic environment now the approach to go ahead for a business uh, a business may adopt any of these three approaches first if the business thinks that uh the situation or the prevailing condition is a little hostile so it can proceed with a very low level of resistance that is it will follow a stability strategy to go ahead the second it may proceed with caution it will definitely want to go ahead but taking into consideration some factors and it will take the necessary uh precautionary measures to go ahead and the third approach it can actually adopt is a dynamic response whereby a business will go for growth so these are the three approaches a business can adopt to tackle the prevailing status quo which is the existing condition okay a business and business environment are interrelated the way we as human beings cannot function in an isolated vacuum which means we can't go away from the people around us we can't go away uh from hunger we need food we need shelter so we need some basic things we can't go away from our environment and expect to live or survive the way we are doing right now normally 
in the same way a business cannot go away from its environment and function in the world and a business and business environment will constantly keep exchanging a few things to mention namely three a business and business environment will keep exchanging information resources and influence and power now how exactly let us try to understand now one of the most simple understandings that we can take here is a business gets raw materials from the business environment and a business gives finished products in return we can see the list of things that come in the business and go out of the business which means the exchange of information so the inflow is the prevailing market conditions the technological the demographical environment government policies activities of other companies all this serves as information for a business wanting to survive in the market and a business will give out information in the form of advertisements annual reports press releases etc so a business will constantly keep exchanging information with the with the business environment a business as i just mentioned a little while ago will keep exchanging resources a business will keep uh getting raw materials from the environment the labor from the environment and in return it will be, it will give goods and services it will give out its uh, values etc a business will also exchange influence and power now a lot of times there are businesses which start a trend a google cars if we've heard about google has made cars that work or run without a human being without a driver so it runs through gps technologies now this is basically a trend started by google so by doing this it is having influence and power on the business environment in simple words the other businesses because it initiated something so it is a it's a trend that google has started another example that we can take here is that of google glass which i just mentioned some time ago so it is uh, another probably another smartphone that you can wear on your head you need to pair it with your cell phone it, because it doesn't have a cellular connection so a business will give out such will exhibit such influence and power whereby it will uh, have an influence and a lot of times <clears throat> through certain informal agreements also a business has certain influence and power as we can see on the screen there is an example mentioned that if a firm has command over resources it can dictate terms for example a monopoly now we know about public sector we know about uh indian railways especially if you talk about uh the the mumbai local trains so uh public sector is a monopoly and that is why it can ex it can dictate terms we don't observe the kind of customer service in the public sector usually the way we observe in the private sector so that does tend to have an influence and power on the businesses business environment certainly has an influence and power on the business because of which business has to adapt and a business also has influence and power on the business environment right so as we were discussing that business and business environment are interrelated and a business does not exist in vacuum away from its surroundings and a business will thrive only if it interacts with the environment those passive to the environment will fade away as uh, the famous saying goes that you either adapt or you perish okay there are a lot of opportunities and threats which occur in the business environment and we need to identify the business environment we need to evaluate and we need to respond accordingly it is in simple words uh you can compare it with the way we adapt to the various seasons in the winter season we wear woolen clothes in the rainy season we carry an umbrella or probably a raincoat with us and that is exactly the way a business has to adapt to its situations a business that doesn't adapt certainly loses some or the other thing if it doesn't die now we need to understand that business environment is complex which means we have to handle so many factors at the same time factors like the internal factors external factors which consider the micro and the macro environment 
So all those factors to be handled at the same time, which makes it complex. Now for a business which is in the world since a few years, it becomes easy for it to understand and measure the various factors. But the matter of fact is these factors keep changing, which means they are dynamic. And that is what makes it more complex. Now a change in the business environment may be viewed as an opportunity by one entity and as a threat by another entity. For example, uh, FDI allowed in the online retail sector is viewed as an opportunity by foreign online retail sellers and viewed as a threat by Indian online retail sellers. So Flipkart will view that as a threat because it may have it may tend to have a negative impact. On the other hand, Amazon and eBay will definitely view that as a big opportunity. And they did seize it bang on. Business environment has a far reaching impact. Now we know about the, the changes in the business environment that took place in the year 1991 in India. And it, it has still an impact. It still certainly has an impact. We know about liberalization, privatization and globalization, the new industrial policy 1991. So that is the year when things started changing for the business environment in India. And that certainly still has an influence because it started from there and globalization was a part of it. So we do see globalization today in the world and we see it big time. Now business environment is pervasive which means that it is present everywhere irrespective of the fact that whether a business is a small business or a big business, whether a business is into manufacturing of goods or services or various types of goods. So you talk about a business which is into diamonds or a business which is into food. Business environment is present everywhere and that is what pervasive means. Now there are certain problems in understanding the business environment. We did understand what the factors in the business environment are but the factors are diverse which means the factors, now if you talk about India as a country, there is a great diversity. India is arguably the most diverse country in the world with n number of languages, n number of religions, n number of food habits, the traditions, cultures, uh, the dressings, the, the outfits and so on and so forth. Now this diversity makes the understanding of business environment a little uh, complex. After we understand the diversity to a certain extent, the fact is that business environment keeps changing and that is what makes it uncertain to predict what is going to happen in the future. Now, we probably didn't think 20 years ago that cell phones will come into this world. 20-25 years ago, the whole world was about the landline phones. And think what will happen 20 years down the line. Now a cell phone can do so many things. A cell phone has replaced gadgets. So we can understand the technological environment though it is a little diverse. But it is uncertain to predict what next. And we already understood the complexity because there are so many factors that have to be handled at the same time. You need to handle the internal factors as well as the external factors which consist of a lot of other elements. <coughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> now, once we've had an understanding of these things, what we need to understand further is that the internal environment helps us to identify the strengths and the weaknesses. When we analyze the factors within a business, that will either be a strength or a weakness. For example, skilled employees is a strength for business whereas a not so firm infrastructure may prove to be a weakness to the business. And the external environment will provide me with an information about opportunities and threats available for my business. Uh, let us understand that a little further. Now these are the potential strengths that can be in a business. We can just take a look at this. Just to name a few, uh, if a business has uh, good innovation skills, so that definitely proves to be a strength if it provides good customer service, if it has a sound capital structure, if it has a good image, all these things prove to be potential strengths for a business. Taking a look at a few of the weaknesses, 
a weak image or a weak reputation, a not so good technological know-how or understanding of things, obsolete facilities, outdated methods, not many products, and so on and so forth, maybe weaknesses. Uh, a potential opportunity will probably be uh, exploiting a new business area or maybe getting into different lines of products or trying to capture the unmet needs. And a potential threat will be a big competitor coming in the business or a sudden shift in the trends and so on and so forth. Now, going back to understanding a few more factors of the business environment, okay, as we were understanding the various factors involved in the understanding of business environment. Now, we did understand the political environment. We also understood the economic environment. We also understood what technological environment means. We understood demographic environment. Now, let us just try to uh, throw some light on socio-cultural environment. Socio-cultural environment deals with the tastes, preferences, habits, culture, traditions, beliefs of the people in the area where the business wants to function. Now, that certainly tends to have an impact on businesses. And that is the main reason why McDonald's or other companies which are into hospitality, food industry basically, do not sell beef in India. Because in India, beef is taboo. In the Hindu community, cow is holy, it is worshipped. And that is the reason why beef is prohibited in India as such. And that is also the reason why McDonald's came up with this new product which is Mac Alu Tiki. That is a product arguably made only for Indian market. Because a majority of the Indians are vegetarians and McDonald's did identify that. So socio-cultural environment deals with the people in general, their likings, their dislikes. And a business has to go ahead taking into consideration those factors related to the people. And that is exactly why we observe uh, discounts and offers given uh, at the time of festival or on the day of festivals in India. Now coming to the global environment. Now globalization is a part of our day-to-day -day life. We use various products made by various companies belonging to different parts of the world. Say for example, I use a cell phone which is made by a Korean company or maybe an American company. And I use a Japanese TV. I use probably an American car and so on and so forth. I use a watch which is made in Switzerland. So we see globalization in our quotidian life. We see it as a part of our day-to-day -day life. We probably wake up with globalization and go to bed with globalization. And a business has to feel part, it has to understand that it is a part of a bigger universe and not just the area or the country where it is functioning. So global environment basically deals with the fact that a business should consider itself a part of the world economy and not just the domestic economy. And it has to match up, it should try and match up to the uh, international standards, the global standards. So these factors form part of the macro environment. Just to reiterate, the political environment, economic environment, socio-cultural environment, technological environment, global environment, and demographic environment. Now, going ahead with a further understanding of the concepts, business and business environment are interrelated. We already understood that. And there are several factors that have an influence on the competition. Now, Mr. Michael Porter gives us a theory which is called the five forces model. Okay, in which he mentions about the five forces that control the competition in an industry or in a market. Now the first factor being the rivalry among existing competitors. Uh, this is one of the most powerful factors that controls or that has an influence on the competition. Now each uh, business has a strategy to compete. And what separates me as a business from other businesses 
is my uniqueness. And I should have a competitive advantage. I should have something unique. I should have something creative, something innovative. And that something innovative can be lowering my price, giving better features, or probably an extended warranty, or increased advertising, a good customer service, and so on and so forth. Okay, now, the intensity of competition will increase as obviously the number of competitors increase. And the fact that competition only and only benefits the consumer as such, it is very important for me to be ahead of the times. And that is what competitive environment is all about. So the first factor here, we'll come back to the heading, a rivalry among compet competing firms. Okay. So this will definitely have an influence on my competition. The second factor have an influence on my competition is potential entry of new competitors. Now with this, what will happen is, there will be a few businesses which will be prevented or there will be a few businesses which will be attracted. Now the potential entry of new competitors certainly poses a threat to my business. Now, if the industry attractiveness increases, now attractiveness here means profitability. If businesses feel that this industry, one particular industry has a high growth rate, so what will happen is more and more businesses will get attracted to that industry. And that certainly tends to increase the competition. And that is what this point refers to, potential entry of new competitors. Now, what prevents competitors? Now, these are factors that can be a uniqueness of my business. Say for example, the technology, the economies of scale, the experiences. Experience in general refers to uh, the number of years a business has been into that field, customer loyalty, and so on and so forth. So these are factors that will prevent competitors. Now, suppose I have a huge financial strength and I have a good brand name. So that may tend to prevent other businesses who are not financially so strong or who do not have such a good reputation in the market. The third factor that will have an influence on the competition is potential development of substitute products. Now, we can just take a look at uh, substitute products. Say for example, uh, these days we observe a lot of use of plastic articles, disposable articles. Now, earlier the trend was non-disposable articles. Say for example, goods made of uh, glass, or aluminium or steel, now, those are replaced with durable products. Now, these days we observe in a lot of new buildings that are constructed, we see PVC pipes for water supply or for drainage. Now, those are durable. Now, a lot of companies make PVC pipes which last for probably a few decades or sometimes even more than 100 years. Now, so these products will definitely tend to have an influence on a business which is, say, into manufacturing of steel pipes. So steel pipes may not come handy. PVC pipes are lightweight. And if they can last as long as steel pipes do, that certainly poses a threat on the competition. Now, the fourth factor to consider here is bargaining power of suppliers. Now, if I depend too much on the suppliers, and if there are a limited number of suppliers, in the market, they certainly exude their bargaining power, which means they have control over my raw materials. And this definitely tends to increase my competition. Now, for example, if I'm into the business of making, uh, say for example, I have a fast food joint. And if I depend on my suppliers for supplying a particular raw material, this will definitely tend to have an influence on my business because if the supplier increases the price of the raw material, that will tend to have an impact on me. Which means that if I sell at the same price which I was selling earlier, my profit margin reduces because my cost has increased. If I sell it at a higher price than what I used to sell earlier, this will tend to have an influence on my competition because consumers have options and they may select not my business but some other business which is providing them a similar product at a lower cost. So this point definitely has an influence on the competition. 
and consumers have bargaining power. Because of competition, consumers are benefited the most. <coughs> I'm sorry. The concentration of buyers, the alternate, is alternate sources of supply, switching over cost is cheap or less, and availability of substitutes. All these factors give power or strength to a consumer. Because as the simple rule of business goes, if you don't serve the consumer, somebody else will. And that is where the consumer has an edge of bargaining. Because if it sees that one particular business is providing a particular product at 100 rupees and another business, which is say business X and business Y. So if business X is providing a product, say, say this product at 100 rupees. And if business Y is also providing a similar product at 110 rupees. So a consumer will definitely go and ask why 110 if it is a product with similar features and if both the companies have a similar reputation in the market, then a consumer will definitely ask why. And a consumer does have bargaining power. And that will increase my competition furthermore. So coming back to the points again, we'll just take a look at the chart that the five factors which have an influence on the competition or the other way to say it is Michael Porter's five forces model for competitive analysis would include these five factors. First, rivalry among existing firms, which is existing competitors, threat of new entrants, threat of substitute products or services, bargaining power of suppliers, bargaining power of consumers or the buyers. Now to combat bargaining power of suppliers, what I can do is I can enter into that business which my supplier is into. Now, this is referred to as vertically backward integration because I'm going backwards in the chain of distribution. Apart from doing what I am doing, I'm going one step back and I'm also entering that business so that I can have cost control over my raw materials and so that I can eliminate that particular supplier from that chain of distribution. Now for that supplier, I am a customer. Now I have bargaining power, am I right? So I have bargaining power, the supplier also has bargaining power. I'm a customer for that supplier and the supplier obviously is a raw materials provider for me. So when I enter into the same business as the supplier, the supplier's competition increased and what the supplier can do is the supplier will enter into the same business as mine. So the supplier, thinking from my point of view, I am also, apart from what I am doing, I am going backwards in the chain of distribution. And thinking from the supplier's point of view, the supplier is coming ahead. So the supplier may enter into my business because the supplier may think that if I provide raw material at this cost and this person is make, converting that raw material into a finished product, and earning a great deal out of it. So why can't I do that? So for example, the bargaining power of suppliers can be controlled by vertically backward integration. Now to take an example, ITC Limited, Indian Tobacco Corporation Limited, one of the main businesses is into cigarettes. Now what happened is as and when the suppliers now the suppliers of the tobacco leaves, so tobacco leaves obviously happens to be one of the main raw materials if you talk about cigarettes as a, as a finished product. So as the suppliers started increasing the price of the raw materials, which is the tobacco leaves, what I, ITC did is it started cultivation of tobacco leaves. So it started getting control over its raw materials cost also in this manner. And this is called vertically backward integration because they went backwards in that chain of distribution, in the value chain. So this can be an example of vertically backward integration and this is how one of the ways you can combat the bargaining power of suppliers. Now, how to combat the bargaining power of consumers? Now, Raymond at one particular point in time was into supplying cloth to various retailers who used to then stitch it as per the consumer needs custom fit and sell it. What Raymond thought is that let us also start retailing apart from supplying the cloth. That is what they did. So earlier they were only into supplying raw materials, which is the cloth. 
Now they also started retailing. That means they started selling ready-made garments with the brand name Park Avenue and Parks. So this is one of the ways you combat bargaining power of consumers or the buyers. And this is called vertically forward integration. So I hope we have a clear understanding of the five forces model for competitive analysis given by Michael Porter. Now going ahead with the topic, there's a question that can come in your exam which is called Pestle analysis. Now this is the same as the macro factors that we understood. Political, economic, sociocultural, technological, legal and environmental. So please do not get confused in your exam. In case this is asked in your exam, you can refer to the answer that we did on macro environment and write accordingly. 